This is the story of the third American atomic bomb that was going to be dropped on Japan on the 19th of August, 1945. But this also is the story of one of the most forgotten heroes of World War II. The U.S. Distinguished Service Medal is earned for exceptional service in combat and was awarded in 1968 to Colonel Clifford J. Heflin. Heflin is hardly a household name, but in fact, Heflin commanded two vital, top-secret and highly successful projects in World War II. During World War II, the 492nd Bomb Group of the 8th Air Force and the OSS Packing Station under the direction of SHAPE worked in close cooperation with similar British services to deliver thousands of tons of vital supplies to enemy-occupied countries, successfully arming, controlling, and coordinating the activities of 350,000 resistance members. It all started in a small village in the east of England, Harrington. Known as the Carpetbagger Group, they operated from an isolated airdrome at Harrington, where a fleet of B-24s took to the air about 15 nights a month delivering their cargo of supplies and humans only during the moon period. Heflin commanded the secret base at Harrington. He also personally tested the highly modified B-24 bombers that were used for these missions. The first plane roared defiantly toward occupied Europe. The second The third until all planes were in the air. Another carpetbagger mission was on its way. Their mission, in the words of Winston Churchill, was to set Europe ablaze. Following D-Day, the resistance fighters of France and other countries slowed down German troop movements, blowing up bridges, railway lines, to stop the Germans supporting their troops under attack after the D-Day landings. It was an audacious and successful mission. The story of the carpetbagger crews the Special Operations Executive, the Jedbergs, the Office of Strategic Services, and the Resistance Fighters is a fantastic success story of World War II. Eisenhower credits their mission in shortening the war in Europe by over two weeks. And Commander Heflin had a unique style and privilege during the carpetbagger missions, Commander Heflin was in total control. Every operation was authorized by him. He never had to refer any of these missions to his superiors above him in the chain of command. After VE Day and the end of fighting in Europe, fighting continued in the Pacific Theater. Heflin, his wife, and two young daughters returned to the United States for a well-deserved rest. But on arriving home, he received a phone call from Major General Leslie Groves, who is running a secret project called the Manhattan Project.
Groves saw in Heflin an ideal commander for a secret mission that almost nobody knows about today. Grove selected and ordered Heflin to go to a remote area of Utah. There, one of the most secret bases had been constructed. Wendover. This is the base where the flight operations for the dropping of atomic weapons was housed in a secret and enormous area with some of the longest runways in the US, the US Air Force started Project Alberta. Their mission to practice all operations that would lead to a successful dropping of a nuclear device in Japan. But there was massive problems. First of all, they didn't have an aircraft. Neither the B-17 or the B-24 could carry the size, girth and weight of the bombs that were being built in Los Alamos. A new aircraft, the B-29, was under construction, but it was never designed to carry an atomic weapon. In a fascinating twist of history, the only Allied aircraft capable of carrying an atom bomb was the RAF Lancaster. Its designer, Roy Chadwick, was approached but never told the full story. And to this day, the RAF British Lancasters might have dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The issue with the B-29 is the wings bar goes between a forward and an aft bomb bay so neither of its bomb bays were actually big enough for this atomic weapon. But after a lot of thought, the B-29 was modified. The two bomb bays were merged together so it could fit the big bomb. But then they found it wouldn't drop. The only solution was to go back to the Lancaster and use the bomb dropping mechanism built in Britain. With only weeks to go before a land invasion of Japan and possible heavy losses, the modified B-29s, codenamed Silver Plate, made it to Timian Island. We've all heard of the Enola Gay and Commander Tibbets. He commanded the mission on the 6th of August that dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Three days later, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. Both bombs were rather different. The Hiroshima bomb by firing two hemispheres of fissionable material into a critical mass. The Nagasaki bomb, it used focused conventional explosives wrapped round the core. In many ways, both Hiroshima and Nagasaki were tests. We often forget that photographing and measuring the effects of the bomb was almost as important as the mission to drop it. 
But the big picture was to successfully get Japan to surrender. For two days, Japan did nothing. So Heflin, the commander of Wendover, was prepared to fly the third bomb. We can now reveal that the third atomic weapon was to be dropped on the 19th of August. But as we all know from history, Japan did surrender and Heflin's third bomb was never used. Let's not forget Commander Heflin, his outstanding project in Britain called Carpetbagger and his success in training the atomic pilots at the secret base called Wendover in Utah. The truth is out there. 